in mathematics and theoretical physics. A pseudo-Euclidean space is a finite-dimensional real n space together with a non-degenerate indefinite quadratic form Q. Such a quadratic form can, given a suitable choice of basis, be applied to a vector x equals x1 e1 plus, plus x n e n, giving which is called the magnitude of the vector x. For true Euclidean spaces, k equals n, implying that the quadratic form is positive definite rather than indefinite. Otherwise q is an isotropic quadratic form. Note that if i k and j greater than k, then q equals 0, so that a plus ej is a null vector. In a pseudo-Euclidean space, unlike in a Euclidean space, there exist vectors with negative magnitude. As with the term Euclidean space, pseudo-Euclidean space may refer to either an affine space or a vector space over real numbers. Geometry. The geometry of a pseudo-Euclidean space is consistent in spite of a breakdown of the sim properties of Euclidean space, most notably that it is not a metric space as explained below, though its affine structure provides that concepts of line, plane and generally of and affine subspace can be used without modifications, as well as line segments. Positive, zero, and negative magnitudes A null vector is a vector whose magnitude is zero. Unlike in a Euclidean space, it can be non-zero, in which case it is perpendicular to itself. Every pseudo-Euclidean space has a linear cone of null vectors given by x. Q equals zero. When the pseudo-Euclidean space provides a model for spacetime, the null cone is called the light cone of the origin. The null cone separates two open sets of positive magnitude and negative magnitude vectors. If k greater than 1, then the set of positive magnitude vectors is connected. If k equals 1, which means the quadratic form has the only x12 square term with positive sign, then it consists of two disjoint parts, one with x1 greater than 0 and another with x1 less than 0. Similar statements can be made for negative magnitude vectors if k is replaced with n minus k. Distance the magnitude q corresponds to the square of a vector in the Euclidean case. To define the vector norm in an invariant manner, one has to get square roots of magnitudes, which leads to possibly imaginary distances. See square root of negative numbers. But even for a triangle with positive magnitudes of all three sides, the triangle inequality is not necessarily true. That's why terms norm and distance are avoided in pseudo-Euclidean geometry, replaced with magnitude and interval respectively. Though, for a curve whose tangent vectors all have the same sign of magnitude, the arc length is defined. It has important applications. See proper time, for example, rotations and spheres. The rotations group of such space is indefinite orthogonal group O, also denoted as O without a reference to particular quadratic form. Such rotations preserve the form Q and hence the magnitude of each vector whether is it positive, zero, or negative. Whereas Euclidean space has a unit sphere, pseudo-Euclidean space has the hypersurfaces X q equals 1, and x, q equals minus 1. Such a hypersurface called a hyperboloid or unit quasi-sphere is preserved by the appropriate indefinite orthogonal group. Symmetric bilinear form The quadratic form q gives rise to a symmetric bilinear form defined as follows. The quadratic form can be expressed in terms of the bilinear form. When, then x and y are orthogonal elements of the pseudo-Euclidean space. Some authors use the terms inner product or dot product for the bilinear form, but it does not define an inner product space and its properties do not match to dot products of Euclidean vectors, although these terms are seldom used to refer to this bilinear form. The standard basis of the real n space is orthogonal. There are no orthonormal bases in a pseudo-Euclidean space because there is no vector norm. Subspace is an orthogonality for a subspace U of a pseudo-Euclidean space, when the magnitude form Q is restricted to U. 
Following three cases are possible. Q, U is either positively or negatively definite. Then, U is essentially Euclidean. Q, U is indefinite, but non-degenerate. Then, U is itself pseudo-Euclidean. It is possible only if dim U2, if dim U equals 2, which means then U is a plane, then it is called a hyperbolic plane. Q, U is degenerate. One of most jarring properties of pseudo-Euclidean vectors and flats is their orthogonality. When two non-zero Euclidean vectors are perpendicular, they are certainly not collinear. Any Euclidean linear subspace intersects with its orthogonal complement only by the zero subspace. But the definition from the previous subsection immediately implies that in any vector nu of zero magnitude is perpendicular to itself. Hence, for the one subspace n equals nu generated by such non-zero vector, its orthogonal complement n will be a superspace of n. The formal definition of the orthogonal complement of a vector subspace in a pseudo-Euclidean space gives a perfectly well-defined result which satisfies the equality dim u plus dim u equals n due to the magnitude forms non-degeneracy. It is just the condition u u equals 0 or, equivalently, u plus u equals all space which can be broken if the subspace u contains a null direction. While subspaces form a distributive lattice, as in any vector space, they do not form a Boolean algebra with this operation, as in inner product spaces. For a subspace n composed entirely of null vectors, always holds nn or, equivalently, nn equals n. Such subspaces can have up to min dimensions. For a Euclidean k subspace its orthogonal complement is a dimensional negative Euclidean subspace, and vice versa. Generally, for a dimensional subspace u consisting of d plus positive and d minus negative dimensions, its orthogonal complement U has positive and negative dimensions, while the rest D0 ones of degenerate and form the UU intersection. Parallelogram law and Pythagorean theorem The parallelogram law takes the form using the square of the sum identity. For an arbitrary triangle, one can express the magnitude of the third side from magnitudes of two sides and their bilinear form product. This demonstrates that, for perpendicular vectors, a pseudo-Euclidean analog of the Pythagorean theorem holds. Angle generally, absolute value, x, y, of the bilinear form on two vectors may be greater than square root, qq, equal to it, or less. This causes similar problems with definition of angle as appeared above for distances. If k equals 1, then for positive magnitude vectors which permits to define hyperbolic angle, an analog of angle between these vectors through inverse hyperbolic cosine. It corresponds to the distance on a dimensional hyperbolic space. This is known as rapidity in the context of theory of relativity discussed below. Unlike Euclidean angle, it takes values from 0 plus infinity and equals to 0 for anti-parallel vectors. There is no reasonable definition of the angle between a null vector and another vector. Algebra and tensor calculus Like Euclidean spaces, a pseudo-Euclidean space possesses geometric algebra. Unlike properties above, where replacement of q to minus q changed numbers but not geometry, the sign reversal of the magnitude form actually alters c. So for example C1, 2 and C2, 1 are not isomorphic. Just like over any vector space, there are pseudo-Euclidean tenses. Like with a Euclidean structure, there are raising and lowering indices operators but, unlike the case with Euclidean tenses, there is no basis where these operations do not change values of components. If there is a vector V beta, the corresponding covariant vector is and with the standard form the first k components of V-alpha are numerically the same as ones of V-beta, but the rest n minus k have opposite signs. The correspondence between contravariant and covariant tenses makes a tensor calculus on pseudo-Riemannian manifolds analogous to one on Riemannian manifolds. Examples A very important pseudo-Euclidean space is Minkowski space 
which is the mathematical setting in which Albert Einstein's theory of special relativity is conveniently formulated. For Minkowski space, n equals 4 and k equals 3 so that the geometry associated with this pseudometric was investigated by Poincaré. Its rotation group is the Lorentz group. The Poincaré group includes also translations and plays the same role as Euclidean groups of ordinary Euclidean spaces. Another pseudo-Euclidean space is the plane Z equals X plus Y J consisting of split complex numbers. Equipped with the quadratic form this is the simplest case of a pseudo-Euclidean space and the only one where the null cone dissects the space to four open sets. The group SO plus consists of so-named hyperbolic rotations.